What do ancient skulls tell us about the new world? Buckle up, because the history of the Americas is being rewritten. Did ancient seafarers from Australasia reach the Americas over 20,000 years ago? New studies that link genetics, skull morphology and ancient migration routes is rewriting our understanding of the peopling of the new world. In the early morning mist off the coast of Baja, California, one might imagine a narrow dugout canoe emerging through the choppy waves. Paddlers cloaked in sea lion pelts, their obsidian eyes scanning the distant shoreline. Their appearance, long-headed, lean and angular, strikingly different from the robust-faced peoples farther north or inland. Were these ancient mariners the descendants of a forgotten migration? People related not to the Siberians who crossed the Bering Land Bridge, but to the seafaring early Austronesians of islands Southeast Asia and Melanesia. That is the central mystery explored in this analysis, using both the latest genetic data and the haunting skeletal legacy of individuals like Penyon Woman, Lucia, and the enigmatic Pericou of Baja, California. Could these people represent a coastal migration that came not overland, but across the sea? And if so, could they have paddled from island to island, from Indonesia to Japan, across the Pacific Rim along Alaska and British Columbia, eventually reaching the shores of Baja and Peru? The missing link in this story may be the maritime cultures of island Southeast Asia. Between 40,000 and 20,000 years ago, seafarers were already crossing the seas to reach Sahul, Australia and New Guinea. Archaeological sites in East Timor, Indonesia and Okinawa show that humans already had advanced seafaring capabilities, including deep-sea fishing and seasonal settlements near the coast. At Jerimalai Cave in East Timor, in eastern Indonesia, archaeologists uncovered over 38,000 fish bones, including tuna and shell-made fish hooks dating to 42,000 years ago. Tuna are fast-moving open-ocean fish, suggesting these people used advanced techniques like trolling, nets, or fish aggregation devices. They were not just coastal gatherers, they were navigators, hunters of the open sea. In Okinawa, Japan, shellfish hooks dated to 23,000 years ago were discovered in a cave that had been occupied by early humans with Melanesian-type skulls. These hooks, younger than those from East Timor or Papua New Guinea, indicate a maritime culture stretching north from Taiwan through the Ryukyu Islands into the Japanese archipelago. In Baja, California, the same style of fish hooks are dated to 12,000 years ago. This evidence suggests that long before the modern Austronesians, who emerged around 5,000 years ago, earlier seafaring populations existed in island Southeast Asia. People with a shared ancestry with Australo-Melanesians and later Papuans and Australians. Could some of these early maritime peoples have travelled north through Japan, across the Kuril Islands and east along the Aleutians to Alaska, eventually reaching Baja, California? This route, while daunting, is geographically possible. It follows a chain of islands and seasonal fishing grounds rather than an open ocean crossing. And the technology, dugout canoes, fish hooks and waterproof hide clothing, was already in use. At the opposite end of the Americas from Baja, California, in the wind-swept channels of Tierra del Fuego, lived another seafaring people known as the Yagan. These hardy, canoe-born hunter-gatherers navigated the icy fjords of southern Chile and Argentina, clothed in little more than grease and determination, surviving on fish, seals and shellfish in one of the most extreme environments on Earth. Their language was unrelated to any other in the Americas, their lifestyle entirely marine-based, and their genetics, like their skulls, were perplexingly unusual. While seemingly worlds apart from the desert-dwelling Periku of Baja, genetic and morphological data have suggested an unexpected link between these two ancient populations. The Yagan of Tierra del Fuego, whose closest Amerindian relatives are the Periku of Baja, California, and the Lagoa Santa of Brazil. This group forms a geographic arc that spans the entire margin of the Americas, from the far south to the far north of South America to the Amazon. Their shared traits, both in skull shape and in cultural reliance on maritime life, suggest more than coincidence. Both the Yaghan and the Periku 
were coastal specialists who made their living from the sea. Both were small, physically lean, and adapted to marine hunting. And both appear to be outliers, genetically and morphologically, compared to surrounding indigenous populations. Importantly, both groups have also been linked with the haplogroup D4H3A, a rare mitochondrial lineage that follows a coastal distribution along the Pacific, from Alaska down through California and all the way to Tierra del Fuego. This pattern strongly supports the hypothesis of a Pacific coastal migration by early seafarers who followed the western rim of the Americas rather than penetrating deep inland. In this light, the Yagan and the Periku may not just be distant relatives by skull shape or DNA, they may be the surviving bookends of a single ancient seaborne migration, one that hugged the coastlines for thousands of miles over thousands of years. Where modern languages and tribal names fail to show continuity, the bones and genes speak. These were coastal people, long-headed people, paddling their way along the edge of a continent. In the Periku of Baja and the Yagan of Tierra del Fuego, we find a forgotten kinship forged in salt, bone and tide. Baja, California may have been a place where these early seafarers found isolation and refuge. The Pericou, with their unique skulls and seafaring lifeways, seem like cultural and biological echoes of that ancient journey. Anthropologists have long remarked on their unusual appearance, describing them as relics of a different age. Early Spanish accounts described the Pericou as small, thin, and highly adapted to fishing, shellfish gathering, and canoe travel. Their name comes from their unique language, which sounded to the Spanish like parakeets chatting. These people may have represented the last isolated branch of a population that spread down the Pacific Rim thousands of years before. Indeed, some Mexican anthropologists believe they were the last living representatives of a wave of australo melanesian related coastal peoples who arrived in the Americas before the Beringians dominated the continent. We still have to explain the different skulls, one researcher said, but we know the old story must be changed. The 12,755-year-old skull of Peñon woman, discovered in Mexico City and radiocarbon dated, posed a question that defied conventional narratives. Her skull was long and narrow, dolichocephalic, not at all like the broad, short-faced skulls of later Native Americans. Mexican anthropologists proposed a daring hypothesis. Peñon woman was not just an early American, but a direct ancestor of the historic Pericu people of Baja California. The Pericu were equally mysterious. Early anthropologists remarked on their striking appearance, noting similarities to Melanesians and the ancient remains from Lagoa Santa in Brazil. Their skulls were long-headed and unlike most other Native Americans, they were described as thin, shellfish-eating people who lived in isolation on the arid peninsula and navigated coastal waters in dugout canoes. Research suggested that the Pericou were part of a coastal migration related to Australo-Melanesian populations. They could have come out of Australia, hopped along Japan and the Aleutian Islands, and followed the coast to America, the researchers said. In their view, Baja California was a genetic cul-de-sac, where an early coastal people, cut off from the interior and later migrations, became stranded. Across the continent, Lucia's skull, dated to over 11,000 years ago and found in Lago Santa, Brazil, revealed a remarkably similar morphology to Peñon woman and the Pericou, long-headed, gracile, with facial features likened to Australian aboriginals, Lucia's skeleton ignited debate about an earlier migration from a different lineage than the typical Beringian Siberian ancestors. Earlier anthropologists had already suspected such a link. An early study on the Pericou claimed a true blood relationship with the Melanesians and the people of Lagoa Santa, using comparative anatomy and early forms of statistical analysis. Their theory was dismissed at the time, but new DNA studies may be forcing scientists to reconsider. And so we must ask, were the first Americans Australo-Melanesian? Recent research has identified a surprising Australasian genetic signal in some indigenous South American populations. Specifically, genetic signatures shared with Australo-Melanesian peoples, referred to as the Y-signal, were found in the Surui and Caritiana of the Amazon, 
as well as in coastal groups in Peru such as the Chotuna, Sechura, and Narihuala. This discovery prompted a radical reinterpretation of migration patterns. According to geneticists, these signals did not come from a trans-Pacific voyage from Australia to South America, but rather from a much earlier mixing event in Southeast Asia or Siberia. They proposed that ancestors of the first Americans met and interbred with populations related to Australasians before ever crossing the Bering Land Bridge. However, this model presents a problem, the absence of the genetic Y signal in North America. If this ancestry entered via Beringia, why is it absent in North American indigenous populations? One explanation is that the Y-bearing populations bypassed the northern interior entirely by travelling rapidly along the Pacific coast. Another possibility, highly speculative, is that a separate maritime migration reached South America directly via the Pacific. The morphology of ancient American skeletons reinforces the idea of a coastal migration with Australasian features. Lucia in Brazil, Peñon woman in Mexico, and other skulls found in Panama and Argentina all show cranial traits reminiscent of South Pacific or island Southeast Asian populations. The long, dolichocephalic skulls of these early Americans stand in contrast to the short, brachycephalic skulls of later Native American groups. Some scientists have argued that these differences reflect adaptations to local climates or diets but others see them as remnants of separate migrations. Could these Panamanian peoples be the descendants of Australasian-related migrants who reached the Americas independently? In Panama, the genome of a 1,000-year-old skeleton showed 80% Denisovan DNA and only 20% Neanderthal DNA, an unusual ratio that aligns more closely with the genetics of Papuans and Australians than with other Native American populations. This finding adds fuel to the fire. Not only morphology, but also archaic DNA points to a different ancestral route. If one were to trace a plausible migration route, it would begin in island Southeast Asia. From there, seafarers may have moved north into the Philippines, Taiwan and Japan. From southern Japan, they could cross to the Kur Isles, then hop along the Aleutian Islands before making landfall in Alaska. From there, they could follow the Pacific coastline, ice-free during certain periods, down to the Pacific Northwest, and eventually to Baja California, Peru, and Chile. The marine-focused subsistence of the Pericu, their shellfish-based diet, and archaeological sites near estuaries all support this. The coastal route would allow for continual access to resources and reduce the need to cross inhospitable inland terrain. Some suggest that rising sea levels drowned much of this archaeological evidence. Coastal settlements from before 10,000 years ago now lie beneath the Pacific, their stones and bones entombed in submerged underwater caves and bays. The possibility that early humans related to Australo-Melanesians reached the Americas via maritime routes is no longer fringe speculation. It is a compelling hypothesis supported by both skeletal and genetic evidence. From the fish hook makers of East Timor to the cave dwellers of Okinawa, Ancient seafarers paddled their way across an island-rich Pacific. Their descendants may have arrived not through frozen tundra, but through salt spray and crashing waves. In the windswept coves of Baja, among the jagged coasts of Peru, and in the jungles of Brazil, their legacy remains in the bones and genes of a forgotten voyage. If they were indeed the ancestors of Peñon woman, Luzia and the Pericu, then our understanding of the peopling of the Americas must shift. Not a single wave, but many. Not just over land, but by sea. A world of islands, paddles and perilous journeys that reshape the hemispheres.